So we're out in the real world and we're going to look at the safe isolation procedure. The isolation procedure this time is for one individual circuit which will allow us to change a light fitting. Often as electricians we're faced with the simple challenge of changing a standard ceiling rose and pendant with a fancy light fitting, so a chrome or brass light fitting that the customer requires. So in order to do so we must leave the light fitting on first, okay so I've turned it on, allowing me later on to see the fact that the light fitting will go off. We don't really want to start probing on to a circuit to prove it's energised. We should use those visual clues. Is the TV on? Is the washing machine working? Is the cooker clock on? In this case, is the light fitting on? Okay, so we leave the circuit on before we go through the isolation procedure. It will make it easier for us to see that the circuit itself has been de-energised and therefore been turned off. So we've left the light fitting in the on position. Now we come down to the consumer's unit. And we're going to look in there and see if there's any more clues now about which circuit that we need to de-energise. Ideally, there'd be a distribution chart mounted somewhere around here. Often that is mounted on the inside of the consumer unit lid. In this case, I have no distribution board chart. The customer also doesn't have a distribution board chart separate from the disc board. So I'm going to have to look inside the disc board cover to see if there's any stickers to give me clues. And obviously the right rated value for circuit breakers for a lighting circuit will also be another clue. So now looking inside the distribution board, I can see the board is probably around about 10 years old. We've got RCD protections for several circuits on the right hand side and the main switch and several other circuits on the left hand side. I can also see quite quickly there are three circuits identified as lighting, but no other information, whether they be upstairs or downstairs, front or back of the house. So further investigation is now required in order to find the right lighting circuit to de-energize the circuit that needs to have the light fitting removed. I've spoken with a customer and they are unaware of which one of the three circuit breakers for lighting circuits is the one that will de-energize the light fitting that requires to be replaced. Therefore, I'm going to have to go through individually each of the lighting circuits until we find out which one de-energizes the light we wish to change. At this stage for a domestic dwelling, I do not believe I need a permit to work. But this is a consideration that should be taken into account where there is things such as medical equipment or large amounts of IT equipment that when turned off would cause inconvenience or danger to the customer. With no further information, it's potluck now. I've got three six amp type B circuit breakers to choose from, all indicated to be lights. I believe that they are lights from speaking to the customer. So it's a case of just picking one and seeing if the circuit we wish to change the light fitting de-energizes. In my experience, it will always be the third one I choose. So rather than starting left to right, I'm gonna do right to left. So I'm going to turn off that six amp circuit breaker first. Some of the equipment that I'm going to be using in order to prove my circuit is isolated and to secure the isolation of the distribution board. I've de-energized my first circuit breaker before leaving the consumer unit. I must secure the isolation before checking the circuit is actually de-energized. So before going off and seeing if the light circuit is de-energized, I need to secure the isolation itself. I'm sure many electricians are laughing at me at this point and saying, well, I'll just run off and see if that circuit is turned off. Wider scale, large industrial commercial installations, you cannot leave the distribution board to go and see if a circuit has been de-energised. De Somebody could return the breaker to the on position or replace a fuse while you've left. Therefore, we must secure isolation in every situation before we leave the distribution board itself. So regardless whether I've chosen the right circuit breaker to isolate or remove the correct fuse, if it wasn't a circuit breaker, at this stage I'm going to have to secure isolation and sign to say that I've isolated the circuit. I'm going to use a master lock at this stage. I think it's good practice always to use a master lock. I know there's only been my padlock on it. I haven't got, for instance, a, a painter, a carpenter or a plumber that also would be affected by the de-energising or re-energising of a circuit without them having personal control. So I'm going to fit the master lock and my padlock to this circuit. vitally important that the key comes out and stays with me. So pop it in the pocket before leaving the consumer in itself. So I've now secured the isolation, used a master lock, positioned a sign and taken my key out and kept it on me before now I go off and look and see if my circuit has been de-energized. In the event of me turning up at the circuit and it being energized, I'll have to repeat the process moving to the next circuit breaker that I thought possibly could be the lighting circuit that I was working on. I'll take it back. 
three breakers to choose from. I've come upstairs and the lighting circuit has been de-energized, but I must make sure that the switch hasn't been changed position, therefore turning it off of the switch and not my isolation. So I'll just check at the switch. The circuit is isolated. So for the first time I've had a bit of luck and chose the correct one, but I now need to prove it with my GS38 test probes and proving unit that the circuit actually has been de-energized. I've got my voltage indicator out of my test equipment along with my proving unit and I'm just going to check that this is working correctly before using it. It's been in the uh, test box for some time, we have no idea whether it's still working before using it, so we must first of all prove it's correct and therefore we're happy to use this on the circuit. So even though we believe we've chosen the right circuit breaker because we've seen the light now go out and not work, it could be that the lamp itself has failed during the time that I've been downstairs isolating what I thought was the right circuit breaker. So when I go into the light fin itself, I must still be cautious that it could still be live, therefore GS38 test equipment being used, and we're going to probe on in the appropriate safe manner. First of all, I'm going to probe on between line and neutral. First of all, I need to probe on to the least dangerous of those two conductors, which is obviously the neutral, and then onto the line itself. And we can see that no lights illuminate. And then we need to come off in the appropriate safe order, which is off the line conductor first and off the neutral conductor second. The next test is going to be between neutral and CPC. Again, the least dangerous of those conductors is the CPC. And then we go into the neutral. And then we need to pull off the neutral first and then the CPC. And then finally, we're going to test between line and CPC again in the appropriate order. We go into the CPC first, then onto the line conductor. Again, note the lamps aren't illuminated off the line conductor and off the CPC. That's not enough to prove that the circuit is isolated. These test probes could have failed during the test itself, and therefore we need to recheck them into our proving unit before we can 100% confirm that our circuit is isolated, allowing us to change the fitting for the one the customer requires. Final stage then is just to recheck our test equipment, and yes, it's working correctly. Therefore, we're happy to change the light fin for the one by required by the customer, and our circuit is isolated and secured at the distribution board itself. <laughs> <laughs>